YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers and this is the last episode before game day uh, team keep it clean um, thank you for supporting the way that y'all do uh, thank you for rocking with the channel the way that y'all do um, just all the positive comments and all the feedback and all the um, just the, the healthy conversations and even when we don't agree with each other on stuff y'all still share your opinion respectfully and like i always say that's the only thing i care about with it man that's it um shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons i'm gonna have the list of patrons and say the patrons by name again one day we haven't done that in a long time because they deserve uh that special acknowledgement um but i appreciate y'all uh, if you want to become a team keep it clean patron uh you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids uh, if you want to take part in questions from subscribers you can send me an email at team keep it clean at gmail.com that's another thing i appreciate that y'all send it to the right email thank you for that because that makes everything that much smoother makes the process smooth it's a rough process now um but it makes it a lot smoother when you send it to the right place um but i love y'all i appreciate y'all uh we're looking forward to all the games on sunday of course uh and then of monday is the one that we just can't wait for uh, but anyway i love you all i hope you all having a really good day uh, and let's get into these last questions from subscribers before week one is over first question came from my guy jeff j he said regarding injuries years ago i tore up my knee playing old guy softball after buying a new pair of cleats they had no give to him uh, wondering if that may be the issue last year lamar was slipping all over the field against the browns maybe they made a change that's causing these injuries it's just so strange and yes uh it is and again i appreciate you jeff thank you man um i uh yeah it is it is strange that's the best way to say it it's just strange um i, I would think it would be a little more than cleats though because cornerbacks they marcus peters probably don't have the same kind of cleats as Gus edwards does um and, and then just to to see the consistency of it it it, it has to be deeper than cleats it's I don't know what it is, man. And it, it, it's it's so it's just unfortunate, man. Um, because Ravens they have these injuries every single year, but like this and at this time, like right in the season ain't even start yet. Like, oh come on, man. Um, and just blow after blow after blow after blow. It's ah, it's it's, it's crazy, and it just it doesn't make any sense. If if I would hope that the issue would be cleats. I would hope that that's what it would be because that would be a simple fix. So hopefully you're right. I, I, I hope that that's it. So the Ravens can be like, oh, you know what? We went with these cleats th this year. Okay, we ain't doing those no more. Next question came from my guy, uh, Dewan. He said, it's not Ravens related, but I think uh, to discuss Cam Newton's release from the Patriots where he got to share it in his own words. Uh, that was uh, something special. And it was in a pretty good unfiltered side of the story from his point of view. And yes, it was. I loved it. I loved it because he got to say what he wanted to say. And, and I love how he addressed every single rumor, comment, everything. When the one reporter, I think Scott Volick or something like that, he was like, oh, Cam Newton. I think that rap music is a distraction for Cam Newton. And I was like, what? And then uh, the the whole report about that people think that it was uh it was about him not being vaccinated. That's why he cut him. He addressed that, and then he addressed the rumor about uh Mac. I was about to call him Mac Ten. I think Cam called him Mac Ten in the video, but he addressed the rumor about Mac Jones teaching him the playbook. He he addressed everything, and I I loved it. And he didn't shy away from not one thing. Talked about it all. So if you haven't gotten a chance to watch that, please watch it. Next question came from my guy, Big Larry. He said, first, God bless you and yours. Hope he's keeping you all in good health. Appreciate it, Larry. I mean, no, appreciate it, Big Larry. Uh, he said, my question is, with all the trouble the Ravens have had over the years in drafting and developing wide receivers, why don't they offer the wide receiver scouts and coaches from the Steelers big money to jump ship? There is no salary cap on coaches or scouts, and the Steelers love them or hate them, they always seem to nail it when it comes to wide receivers. And boy, you ain't lying. Now, it's funny. A um, couple years back, for a couple years back, for a couple of years, I have been saying the same thing. I said, well, what, whatever you got to do, whatever you got to pay for to get Steelers wide receiver, do it. Do it. Because it'll be worth Ravens can draft, develop so many other positions. So many other positions. But 
for the most part, about 95% of the time, or actually 98% of the time, when it's come to wide receivers, they just have not been able to nail. And, and, and I think it's a lot deeper than drafting. It's not just drafting. It's been the development. That's been the biggest thing. And have any wide receivers? I, I still don't think any wide receivers for the Ravens have made it to their second contract. I don't. I can't think of any. They offered Torrey Smith, but he got five million more from San Fran. So he was like, "Oh, I'm out." Oh, and I remember that day. I remember that day. I was at Publix. I was getting flowers for my wife, and I, I got the notification to my phone, and it was like, "Oh, it's, it was a goodbye letter from Torrey Smith." My eyes started getting so watery. My eyes, they were so watery, and I was like, I was just shocked. I'm like, man, Torrey Smith is actually leaving. I couldn't believe it, man. I was hurting bad, boy. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't think any Ravens receivers have made it to that second contract. Unless I'm missing somebody. I'm really trying to think. Like a, a receiver that the Ravens drafted. Um, Man, yeah. So that would be um something. Uh, it's, with Hollywood, he, he could be the first. He could end up being the first, um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, now, well, oh, well, with the Steelers wide receiver coaches, my, my mind started going somewhere way left. Um, but with Steelers wide receiver coaches, I think Ravens actually had somebody who used to be a wide receiver coach for the Steelers at one point in time. They either have somebody or they had somebody. I cannot think of who it is right now, so my apologies. But either way, yeah, Steelers, they, they got something over there where – they just they they get it. They know how to do it and it works and it works well for them. So hopefully with TT and Kiki, we can get that same production. Next question came from Gray Ice. He said, Greetings and Graven. Hope all is well with you and the fam. I was wondering uh what your thought would be on EDC pushing contract talks with Lamar Jackson to next offseason. I I don't think it would be a big deal. But the longer you wait, the higher that price goes. So hey, it ain't my money. It's not my salary cap. Is is I'm not the owner or GM or anything of the team. I'm just a really big fan. That and I love them. But <laughs> you want to wait? No problem. Price going up now. His next question. He said, after all the injuries to the team, do, do the Ravens have a realistic chance of making the playoffs? Yes, yes, for sure. They they definitely do. No doubt about it. Yeah, they have been hit hard with injuries, but this team, they, they got a lot of depth. And to me, the biggest injury, all the injuries are big, but the one with the biggest blow would be Marcus Peters. But something that I've been thinking about, you know what, let me finish this question first. He said, personally, I think if we can rebuild chemistry in the offense, we'll be fine. MP was the gravy on top of our meat and potatoes. We still got one of the best secondaries, and I expect our pass rush to be better than last year. I agree. Now, with the secondary, obviously Anthony, I was about to say Anthony Levine, but Anthony, Anthony Averitt, um, it's a lot on his shoulders. Uh, but uh, and, and hopefully, 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 Jimmy Smith and Tay Tay, they, they, they play the full season this year. They stay healthy because with those guys, we already know. We ain't got to go over it. Um, but with Anthony Averitt, something that I've been thinking about. Uh, with Marcus Peters, very risky guy. Uh, he'll give up some big plays, but he will make some big plays. Uh, very um, streaky player. He, all his emotions are right there on the field, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, sometimes they can get the best of him, and sometimes he can get the best of opponents. But he puts it all out there. Love Marcus Peters. Love his game. Respect him. Now, with Anthony Averitt, um, he, from what we've seen from his game, he is not that risk-taking cornerback. He's not that cornerback that's going to go for all the picks and, and try to jump routes and whatnot from what we've seen so far. We haven't seen him extensively, but from what we've seen so far. So um, that could actually that could actually be a good thing. It could actually be a good thing because that same style is Marlon Humphrey style. To where he, ain't, he ain't jumping a bunch of routes and whatnot. Marlon Humphrey is I got an eyelash stuck in my eye. Marlon Humphrey is a cornerback. For interceptions, it got to be right place, right time. Right place, right time. Because with him, like I'm, even his, his first pick of the season last year, I don't even remember how many interceptions he had last year, but his first pick of the season it came, on the first game, came on the first play of the first game of the year against the Browns. 
Baker Mayfield dropped back, threw it, Calais Campbell tipped it. So it, it slowed the pass velocity down, and the ball's up in the air, and Marlon Humphrey just right place, right time, came right to him. Boom. So it's just, um, so now we possibly have two of those to where they're going to play the receiver more than they play the ball. Um, and with Anthony Averitt, uh, hopefully he works on getting his head turned around and really tracking that ball. Um, but we, he's physical, though. He is a physical wide receiver. He ain't afraid to tackle. He ain't afraid. Um, so that's, that's a good thing. But if he can just, oh, it's just little small, simple fixes. But somebody like him, I think he can actually, he can actually help the pass rush because he's not going to be out there getting dogged and toasted by these receivers. He's going to be right there. The, the biggest fear with him is just that he don't turn around fast enough. He don't turn around in time or he doesn't get his hand in the way to knock the ball away. But if he can work on that and, and fix that, fine tune that, we could have like, not saying that he'd be another Marlon Humphrey, but we could have another Marlon Humphrey style corner on the opposite side. So, and then you got Tay Tay at, in the slot. You still got Jimmy Smith out there too. Brandon Stevens. He, I mean, so we, I think the secondary, even though Marcus Peters is the biggest blow, in my opinion, the secondary can still be fine. So much depends on Anthony Averitt. So much also depends on Jimmy Smith's health and Tavon's health. Chris Westry, he's going to have to step up. To like, oof, we... It's a lot of unknowns right now, man. We, well, we know about MP. I mean, excuse me, Marlon Humphrey. Excuse me. We know about him. We know what he can do. We know what Jimmy Smith and Tay-Tay can do, but we don't know if they're going to stay healthy. That's a big thing. And for the rest of the guys, we don't know how they are in the regular season. We've seen, seen them in preseason. And Chris Westry, love him, tall, fast. He, give up, he gave up a big catch every game, but then he made plays too. Um, so hopefully the big catches, they can be eliminated, but... I mean, I, I know that went all over the place, but I just I just had to let y'all know because game time is is going to be on Monday. And that's just where my head is at with Anthony Averitt, man. Um, what if the Ravens just trolled us like that? What if they trolled us and they they was talking, oh, Anthony Averitt starting this, starting that. Oh, yeah, he's going to do this and do that. And then they didn't even start him. What if they did all that? Because they, they sure been talking up Anthony Averitt a lot. What if they threw everybody a curve? Because you know Ravens like to do that. What if they threw everybody a curveball and he wasn't even a starter? Next question came from my guy T-Dog 2003. Uh, he said, hey, Graven, how's your day going? It's going pretty good. He said, I just heard that Gus Edwards is out for the season with an ACL tear. Now, uh, do you think the Ravens will consider trading for Mark Ingram? He already knows the system and he's healthy now. Just a thought. This has been on a lot of Ravens fans' minds. Um... I think it would, they, they've, they and he sent this before we got Devontae Freeman, before we got Latavius Murray. Um, they've certainly loaded up at running back right now. So Mark Ingram, them attempting to trade for Mark Ingram, I think that that is an afterthought right now. Um, it, I think it, it could still be contingent on how these other guys do, though. Say, for instance, they just not cutting it. Say, for instance, Ravens trying, they trying, they trying, and they just not cutting it. If it's like week four, week five, and I don't expect these running backs not to cut it. I expect them to do just fine. But if it gets to week four, week five, and it still wasn't happening, it still wasn't working out, even though it's Greg Roman's system, you got Lamar Jackson back there, the offensive line should be better. I don't see I don't see us having I don't see us having to have this conversation. But worst case scenario, if that happened, then at that point, then I think they will consider possibly trading for Mark Ingram, depending on how he's doing. Depending, because, hey, he may not be looking so hot either. Or he might be. We will see. But right now, no. Next question came from my guy, Dwayne L. He said, love the content, my brother. Appreciate it. Uh, with all the injuries on the Ravens, do you think it would be a great idea for all the injured starters to be around the team as much as possible to help the new players and younger players with in-game adjustments on game day as well as practice to minimize the learning curve for new starters? Well, they, they already do that. They're already around all the, uh, the the backups. Like all the offensive line, they they taking reps and stuff, and they learning from each other. All the wide receivers, the running backs, the quarterback, every, everybody. You're, you're with your position group. So, yeah, they, they definitely do some of that already. Uh, but he said, I remember back when Ray Lewis got hurt against the Cowboys. Next week when he was away, the Ravens got uh, beat up on by the Houston Texans in a team meeting after that. Then when Ray came back around the team next week, 
We went on a great run to win the Super Bowl. I also think it would help with, the, with keeping the injured starters locked in with the team. Uh, after watching Ronnie Stanley's press the other day, hearing him talk about how he felt alone and depressed when he was away. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I, um, my apologies. I misunderstood what you were saying. I thought that you was, I thought that you was, uh, yeah, you did say it right. You said, do you think it would be a great idea for all the injured starters to be around the team as much as possible to help the new players and younger players with in-game adjustments on game day? Okay. Well, yeah, if they, I mean, a lot of times with an ACL, they may not be able to walk for a while, so they may not be able to be around everybody yet. But, um, cause I was thinking you were saying, is it a good idea for starters to be around backups? Uh, like with in-game adjustments and practice and all that. And I'm thinking, of course, they already do that. But you're talking about guys that are out for significant periods of time with injury. Okay, got it. That's on me. My apologies, man. Um, but, yeah, I saw, yeah, perfect. And, yeah, that's true. Ronnie Stanley did say that the other day. He said he uh, felt depressed, felt isolated. Um, and he said that you don't want those guys to feel abandoned. You don't want injured guys to feel like they're abandoned. Uh, so that's important. Um, and he said, I know players have families and other responsibilities, but I think this will be a win-win for the team as well as all the all the players, uh, injured and non-injured. Let me know what you think. Keep up the great work, and I'll be watching every video you put out like I always do. God bless. Appreciate that, Dwayne. Um, and, and, yeah, that is uh, important that um, if they can, only if they can, like if – because, again, they got to have the surgery and whatnot first. But, yeah, because they the, – the, the injured starters and whatnot are just injured players, period. They can help – like, even, yeah, during the game, they may see something that the player that's on the field, he may not see. And when he comes over, they can be like, hey, we saw this, we saw that, XXX, you should do this. They keep doing that. They got a pattern of doing this. That can that can help and that can really go a long way. So I appreciate you bringing that up. Next question came from my guy Wyatt P. He said, Engraving, with all the injuries that have been happening this offseason, should we fire our strength and conditioning coach? No. Uh, the Eagles are probably envious of how many injuries we have, and it is that bad. What is going on with our players? It's, it's, again, it's just been unfortunate. Now, Ravens, they, even though it doesn't seem like it right now, Ravens actually usually pretty have, they usually have a pretty healthy team. It doesn't seem like it right now. And they do have significant injuries every single year. But overall, they're usually pretty healthy. So, no, you don't want to just blow up all the strength and conditioning coach um, because of this. It's, it's, it's got to, again, I don't know what it is, but it's got to be something, whether it's deeper than that, whether it's not as deep as that. Hopefully, like my guy said earlier, hopefully it would just be with the cleats, but um, it's, it's scary to think about, but when they get some time, they, they just got to do some extra research to see what is going on. This question came from my guy, Manuel. He said, what's up, Engraven? After watching the Ravens Wired episode, it made it clear this is not a team, this is a family. Players telling Harbaugh it's okay that you wanted to put the starters out in preseason because injuries can happen at any given time. And you listen to what players say about the Ravens when they come here and they play and they say it's a family and we got to see what they experience. So Harbaugh is right in one thing. He won't beg for players to come and play here. Because why do you need that when your organization treats everyone as family and players, speaking of the Ravens, say it's family in there. Uh, and you and you like it. Uh, and if Team Keep It Clean needs proof of it, look at Justin Houston signing and the press on September 9th. Even MPs press on the same day. Um, and he said, stay safe. And my question to you is when can we expect another Team Keep It Clean camp? <laughs> Yeah, I, hmm, no clue. Uh, and he had another question. He said, um, I was listening, not hearing, listening. There's a big difference there. Uh, about them talking about Lamar Jackson. And it seems Lamar, uh, with play and with his work ethic, has turned some haters into fans. Colin Coward is one, even though he says Lamar needs to improve in his throwing. But he always points out the, that Lamar has won 80% of his games. And that enough. that's enough to tell you that he's special. Now, I'm not saying Lamar can turn every hater into a fan, but he's letting his work make the talk instead of talking and doing nothing. Cough, cough, Cowboys. Uh, but hear me out. Lamar winning the Super Bowl will expose those haters that only hate with no basis at all. Uh, then us Lamar fans will stop listening to them and they'll try to get loud, but Lamar will show them the ring of power. That Super Bowl ring saying, I won and you got nothing to tell me uh, and I can get another. Um, so, yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. Even though if Lamar gets a Super Bowl ring, that the, the, a lot of these haters will never shut up. They, they won't ever. And see, there, there's a difference between criticism, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. And just flat out hate. 
and, and just flat out reaching and, and trying to make up narratives and whatnot, there's a big difference between all of that. Uh, so we know how that goes. And he also said, what would be your honest reaction if Lamar signs a deal that is $30 million a year for 10 years and his answer on taking less is so EDC can bring more talent to the team and win another? I know it's very hypothetical, but hey, until it happens, everything is possible. Um, I... I, I want him to get his money straight up get 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 his money um because the ravens i still while they they had a good off season it could have been better it could have been better and they did get turned down sometimes but i, I feel like they could have really done more to put more pieces and better pieces around lamar jackson i feel like they could have been and, and for what the, the the titans gave up to get a julio jones well, what they gave up, like, a, I forgot what it was, but it was something crazy where it's like, that's it? And it was like, man, like, really? You, uh, uh, but Ravens could have Ravens done more. They could have done more to just give Lamar more. Um, so I don't, I, I wouldn't want Lamar to be taken advantage of in that aspect to where it's like, all right, I'll take less so you can really build around me, but they don't, they, they don't build around him. And he's on his rookie deal now. So I just, I, I wouldn't want it to be anything like that. Um, now, 30 million, they, like, I, I, there's no way that he'd take no 30 million year deal. And then I know, I know you said it's hypothetical, but uh, I just, I, I, I want them to be, I know EDC is very aggressive, but let's get more aggressive on like the offensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, Sammy on a one year deal. He said he wanted to finish his career with the Ravens, but of course he, of course he's gonna say that. We, we get it. We know the business and whatnot. Um, but we hope so. We wish Sammy well. Hope he does his thing. Hope he stays healthy too. Um, but yeah, I feel like they they could have just went 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 all out a little more. Uh, especially on offense, everything should still work out. Um, everything will be fine, but it could have been even better. Uh, but anyway, he says stay safe, and I nominate Joe Nubo for comeback player of the year. He's getting in shape, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Ravens making him an offer to take PQ's spot. That would be something. Next question came from my guy, uh, Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? It's been crazy last few days with our running back situation. I've seen all your latest videos, even the one you posted today on Wednesday, September 8th, which happens to be my birthday. I turned 41 years young today. But my take is, I don't have a problem with the signings of Bell and Cannon. Me neither. Uh, I understand your take on Bell's patient running style in our system, but I believe Roman will make it work because he excels in drawing up the running game. I agree. Uh, I wish he did the same thing in the passing game, too. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I like the Ravens in Vegas Monday night, 34 to 13. What's your thoughts and predictions for the game? Ravens Nation. Um, I said uh, 45 to 17. Um, and I just, again, it's, it's week one Ravens, man. That's why I'm so confident in week one. Now, you ask me about week two, it's going to be a different story. But week one Ravens is just like, ah, come on. Uh, we just got so much high expectations for them because of what they've shown us in week one. Even before Lamar Jackson, like these dudes, all week one, they come ready. They come with it, man. They come with it. I wish they would treat every week like, I, they should treat every week like week one and every week like it's preseason. We should tell Harbaugh, like, hey, Hobbs, it's preseason week one, every game. And we going undefeated. We, I, I promise you, we will go undefeated. If Hobbs and company, they, they knew, they, they had that in their mind. Oh, we, oh, it's preseason and it's week one. Oh, phew, this team would be killing everybody, everybody, for sure, man. Like without a doubt. And the last question on this episode, a question from subscribers came from my guy Paul S. Said, How do the Ravens keep a good attitude going into a tough? season hello what's up engraven hope all is good with you and the fam i apologize if this is a long message and yes the message is very long because the, the letters are so small so you know when you get an email the letters are bigger if this is a short email but if it's small i mean if it's a long email them letters go really small anyway he said uh, and this is why i chose this one as the one to take us out uh he said um i apologize if this is a long message but i have been having a rough couple of weeks and as you can probably understand, after hearing about all the injuries uh, that the Ravens have dealt with throughout training camp and preseason this year, it was devastating to hear that we had lost Gus Edwards and Marcus Peters for the year. Oh, yeah, I, I, I agree for sure. That was tough, man. I, it was so tough because it just hit us all out of nowhere. Uh, for you, for you, whatever you're going through personally, hopefully it gets better real fast, man. Real fast. Hopefully Ravens on Monday night, they give you something to be extra happy about and they get a victory. But now we seriously hope that whatever it is that you're going through, that it... Things 
pick up for you quick, man. Um, and we appreciate you even being willing to share that with us, man, because it takes a, a real man to take somebody um, with a, a willing heart to be able to share that with, with the public, like if they're going through stuff. Because uh, a lot of times, us as, as men, um, and it, it just may be something that's in our nature, but a lot of times, if we're going through stuff, we may not want to let people know. Uh, we want to. We may just want to just be tough about it, and, and in our minds, you know, well, ah, we'll be okay. We'll get through it. We ain't got to talk about it. We ain't gonna worry about it. We could have that mindset, um, and enough times that's fine. But enough times you still gotta let it out. It's, it's nice to let somebody know about stuff. Uh, but anyway, he said, um, I have been a Ravens fan for the past three years or so. Oof, good timing. He said, I live in Central Kentucky, and I have family, cl close family in Louisville. Uh, so I was really excited when the Ravens drafted Lamar Jackson in 2018. Oh, yes, I was too. Um, he was exciting to watch when he was in college, especially when he would break out for a big run, something not seen much at all in the mid-2010s NFL. Here in Central Kentucky, the Bengals are usually on TV. Ooh, sorry to hear that. Uh, and while they were sort of enjoyable to watch back in the prime years of Andy Dalton, they were never exciting. And they would always lose in the big games, five years in a row in the wild card round. Uh, so it was tough to be an NFL fan back then. But when Lamar was drafted by the Ravens and I saw how exciting he was in the NFL, I fell in love with the Ravens. They're in the AFC North, so they're on TV around here, and they're not the Steelers. They've got a pretty dope mascot, and they know how to win. And, of course, 2019 was amazing to watch. Even though the playoff loss to the Titans was a pretty big disappointment. <laughs> it was bigger than a big disappointment. Uh, but he said, I, so I would love to see Lamar win the Super Bowl. Oh, we all would. And wave his ring in the faces of all his naysayers out there. Yes, we would. Uh, so here's my question for you today. Seeing as the Ravens have basically lost their entire veteran running back lineup before week one, uh, and they have also lost Marcus Peters and their wide receiver room is also very banged up, how do the Ravens and us fans keep a good attitude going into this season, even if the final result is disappointing? Well, um, because we don't know what the final result is going to be. So that enough right there, and, and you know what? Even before that, before that, who is this guy that you've been talking about this entire email so far? Because we, we still got a long way to go. But who is the guy that you've been talking about for this entire email so far? It's Lamar Jackson. As long as he's good, Ravens are good. We've seen this guy literally transform this franchise, man. He transformed the Ravens at the first game he stepped on the field as a starter. This dude, the energy he brought, the vibe, he changed everything and never looked back. And every year he improved, every year he got better. So if Lamar's good, Ravens are good. So we can't, that's, that's how I would look at it. And that's how I do look at it because that's what it is. Ravens will be fine, man. They got Lamar. Oh, yeah. They'll be straight. Oh, but he said, here's how I see it. I didn't even know he answered this question. I don't mean to be uh, too pessimistic, but I know how important the running game is to the Ravens offense. And with all of the running backs who practice with the team throughout the offseason, out for the year, even with Greg Roman's understanding of the run game, if we don't have the personnel to run the ball effectively, our offense will likely struggle to move the ball. Now, let me look at the date where he originally sent this. Oh, he sent it on September 10th. Um, no, did he send it on September 10th? Yeah, he did. Okay. All right, so he sent this yesterday. All right. Well, I'm recording on the 11th, by the way. Anyway, um, no, we, we, we got like, we got a lot of running backs now. <laughs> we got Tyson. We got Bell. We got Freeman. We got Murray. We got Cannon. Something got to work out. It, it, there's no way it's going to be like, oh, every single one of those running backs, they can't get the job. Done. It, no, no, there's no way, man. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said, don't get me wrong. Tyson Williams looked good in the preseason, but he was on the practice squad last year, and he has never taken a meaningful snap against a starting caliber NFL defense. As you have said in your videos, Le'Veon Bell is slow to find running routes, uh, which is not a good fit for our style of offense. But real quick, let me get on this Tyson Williams thing. Uh, Tyson Williams, yeah, he was going. He did look good in the preseason, like you said, but he was on the practice squad last year, and he's never taken a meaningful snap against a starting caliber NFL defense. Right. He was going against backups, but... Again, while he would be taking snaps against starting NFL defenses, which would make it harder, he would also be playing with a starting offensive line, which would make it easier. So we got to look at it from both sides of the spectrum. 
So that's something important to keep in mind. Uh, he said, as you said in your video, Le'Veon Bell is slow to find running routes. Well, he, yeah, he, he's, he's patient in the backfield. But um, also, the, the day that we signed him, early on in the morning, uh, I was watching film on Le'Veon Bell. And I did see that he actually has the capability to make quicker decisions. Um, so Le'Veon Bell, he should be fine. His style, it wasn't the best fit because he like, wait, 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 then boom. But he just going to, from the, the film that I saw on him, He's going to have to take the part where he made those quick decisions. Uh, but Le'Veon should be fine. Uh, but he said, uh, and, and Le'Veon Bell's getting old, so we don't really know what he has left. As for the other guys, I would like, I would have to watch more film on them. But none of them, with the exception of Tyson Williams, have been with the team for training camp or preseason. That's true. So they are brand new to our offensive scheme. That's true. Uh, and could take valuable time to learn the system. That's true. This puts pressure on the passing game, which needs to improve dramatically in order for our offense to keep up. Basically, Lamar will have to carry the team. <laughs> so, so what's new? <laughs> so what's new? That's old news. That's what he, he been on that for the past what, two, three years. His rookie year, he had to carry them to the playoffs. His uh, sophomore carries the third carry. So yeah. <laughs> on defense we look better but oh on real quick now yes it, it can take the, some time for these running backs to learn the system but one thing that the ravens have in their favor with these running backs with learning the system is that these running backs got experience they're all veterans yeah they may be a little bit older but they got experience they got wisdom they got smarts they've been in the nfl for a while so they've had to learn different playbooks latavius murray played for the raiders the Vikings, and the Saints. Le'Veon Bell played for the Steelers, the Jets, and the Chiefs. Uh, Devontae Freeman played for the Falcons and the Giants. So each of these guys has played for multiple teams, so they've already had to learn multiple playbooks. So their knowledge of the game should help them with learning Raven's playbook too. Now, Raven's offensive playbook is a lot more difficult than people want to give it credit for. It is a lot more detailed than people want to give it credit for, even with the run game alone. Um, so that should be very... Uh, Interesting to see, and hopefully they can pick it up uh, sooner rather than later. <laughs> but now, he said on the defense, we look better, but still losing Marcus Peters is huge. It's true. Uh, he's great at getting interceptions and forcing fumbles. I don't know about the forcing fumbles part, but getting interceptions, yes. So his loss means our guys will have to work extra hard to stop the other team. Uh, and while we do have depth this year, we have the second toughest schedule in the entire league, uh, right behind the Steelers. So if we want to stay competitive, we need to be firing on all cylinders. Agreed. Uh, we can still make it, but the AFC North will be brutal. And Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs also won't show any mercy. Oh, they haven't been showing any mercy at all. Uh, that's why they've been beating up on us recently. Um, and he said, uh, and besides, there are just so many great teams in the AFC. True, it's deeper than the NFC. And only seven playoff spots. So either we double down and beat the odds, which would be great, or we could fall flat like the 49ers did last year. I hope it's not the latter, but I think it would be good for us fans to be prepared for the fact that we may not make it to the playoffs this year. I just, I don't see that. I, I really don't see that. I, I, I do not see a situation. It's possible, of course. But, I, and I know some, pe some people have compared these Ravens to last year's 49ers because of all the injuries and whatnot. But we still got a lot of our guys. We lost a lot of our guys, but we still got a lot of our guys. A lot. Mainly on defense. We lost Marcus Peters. We lost LJ Fort. Those were definitely two big contributors to defense. But... We got everybody else. Now, we lost all our running backs, all of them. And we lost our first round pick for at least three games. We lost our third round pick from a couple years ago for at least three games. We lost Nick Boyle, who was a fifth round pick back in, I forget when, for at least three games. Jimmy Smith, we'll see what happens with him. But those guys are all coming back. They're all coming back. And then at, with the running backs, we lost a whole room. Now we got a whole new running back room. So I, um, and y'all know me. I'm not no like, oh yeah, I'm always optimistic about anything that the Ravens do. I ought, no, that's not me. But I think it's still realistic to still see this team as a playoff team. I really do. I, I do not think like these guys are bums and these guys are, oh, the season's going to suck now. No, I don't think that at all. But anyway. <laughs> he said, uh, if it gets to week eight and we are less than 500, we should start preparing to go all out next year. 
There's still the chance we could come back, but the Browns, Steelers, Packers, and Rams will be tough opponents. And we may be missing even more key players by then. Uh, in my opinion, it would not make sense for us to waste draft capital tra trading for players to fill in for injured starters if it looked like the season was a lost cause. Instead, if it comes to that, we should think about the 2022 season and keep a good attitude about it. If we make it to the postseason, great, but if we don't, we can give our depth players more playing time on the active roster in regular season games. And hey, Lamar will still be able to show off his passing talent to the world. Uh, when it becomes offseason 2022, we can take all our draft picks, trade guys like Tyler Huntley or even or for even more higher draft picks, trade some of our picks to other teams for proven veterans, draft some good players and go all in on 2022. It is Lamar's fifth year option year, so we will have to do more to fit all our guys under the salary cap. Yeah, because he's getting a big raise next year. Uh, but we should still have enough cap space to make a good run with players acquired through trades, uh, etc. And Lamar will get his big deal, sure, but we still have 2022 before his contract kicks in. Uh, that's true. Uh, so even if 2021 doesn't work out, we can still get hype for 2022 when all our guys should be back. And hopefully with a new strength and conditioning coach and practice routine uh, so they won't be lost before the season even starts. Yes, it will be disappointing losing the 2021 season, but if it comes down to it, it will be better to move on and invest in the future instead of trying to save a season that's already gone. Uh, and even if we don't make it all the way, uh, we can still enjoy the game to game action, watch Lamar throw and run for TDs and see our depth players get a chance in actual games. Uh, anyway. If the going gets rough, we can still cheer on our team, watch the replay highlights, and share the love with all our friends and family. Football really is family. It's the ultimate team sport, and losing is just as much a part of the game as winning is. So stay positive. Enjoy. Stay positive. This doesn't this really sound like you're staying positive. <laughs> what do you say? So stay positive, enjoy the ride, and cheer on Lamar when he breaks um, when he breaks out for a 50-yard run and when he throws a dime outside the numbers to Mark Andrews for a TD. And like Gus Edwards and Marcus Peters, unfortunately, y'all for the 2021 season. I'm out. Whew. That was that was something right there. And that is that is how we end this episode of Question from Subscribers, the last episode uh before the week one game between the Raiders and the Ravens. Woo! Um that was a lot. But yeah, Ravens, they I, I just I don't I don't see it. I I you made some good points, like if the season is lost, but if the season is lost, then all right, go all in on 2022. True, but the season ain't even get started yet. We already talking about if the season is lost just because of these injuries. Now they all big, significant injuries, but Ravens, they still got plenty of people, man. They still got plenty of people. Now, secondary. Secondary is where my biggest fears are. My biggest concerns are with will be with the secondary. Out of all the injuries with the team, biggest concerns are secondary. Because of what we lost and because of what we lost throughout the past couple of years with Jimmy Smith and Tavon Young. Can we trust them to keep going? Hopefully they, they, they do it this year. But anyway, um, I, I just really, I really, really, really hope those guys can stay healthy. But the Ravens, they could always bring in somebody, bring in another corner um, just in case. Now, you still got your young guys now. You still got your favorite hump. You still got Westry. You got Brandon Stevens coming along. You you got our Darius Washington. You you got a lot of guys that you can work with. But just in case, you could look for somebody else too. Um, have somebody on the back burner. Hit hit them up and be like, hey, just in case, save our number. We might be hitting you up. Hopefully, they don't have to. But just in case. Um, but I I feel like right now there's a lot more reasons to be optimistic than pessimistic. And again, y'all know me. I call it how it is. I call it how it is. Right now, I'm extremely optimistic about week one. Week two, yeah. But week one, I'm like, oh yeah, let's get it. Even with everybody that's gonna be out, let's still get it. Um, but this season, it, it just it just gives you so much reason. To, to really feel like the Ravens can still uh, be special. It's going to take that much more from everybody. Coaches, players, everything. But they can get it done.